Yo, what's up YouTube? Leo Shang here, host of the Extreme Full Efficient channel. I don't even have the voice, you know, and the attitude to do the hyped up intro because I am just so tired. These past days, yesterday, right, was already like super brutal, fish the whole day. Today we're gonna fish the whole day again, you know what I'm saying? But anyways, today is September 6th, 2018. It is my outing number 126 of this year. And let me brief you out, let me brief you guys out on the story, right? So yesterday was a great day of fishing. I caught five Atlantic Bonito, the Sarda Sarda, good size two, you know, and I got one keeper, summer flounder, the paralictis, dentatus. But you know, at the end of the day, I was carrying the fish back. I wasn't so sure if the hotel where I am staying at, you know, has a freezer and a refrigerator. So I just gave those fish away, right? Little I knew that when I went back to the hotel, you know, I checked in, I saw the room. There's not only like a refrigerator and a freezer, there's like a full kitchen. And that's when I was like face palm, you know, I was like, man, I just gave the fish away. So when I saw the kitchen and the refrigerator, the fir first thing that came to me is I want to do a catch and cook. I want to eat something a little bit more exotic today, maybe a species that I have never tried before. So this is the main objective for today. I'm here at the jetty, same inlet. I'm going to be fishing the, the whole day. And the main objective, catch some exotic species that I have never eaten before for a proper catch and cook, huh? How about that? You guys have been requesting catch and cook videos on the channel all the time anyways, right? So stay tuned, gonna grab my rod, man, hop some rocks. Hopefully we're gonna catch some cool stuff today. It's on. Flounder. Little flounder. Wow, all tiny though. Tiny, tiny flounder. But hey, you know what? Catching a flounder is still better than not catching at all, right? Beautiful little creatures right here. Hey, let my braided line go. No, no teeth flossing. No teeth flossing, all right? It's on. Got a flounder. Oh yeah, line kind of went slack. Yo, this flounder playing with me here, bro. That's a little bit bigger this time. But it's still super small. Tiny. Okay, easy, bro, easy. Beautiful summer flounder right here. Bam, super, super gorgeous fish. All right, gotta release it right here. Mmm, landing anything exotic today, I think our best chance will be here at the end of the jetty. Now, mind you, this is one of the sketchiest jetties in New Jersey. You guys can see, if you fall down there, or over there, let me tell you, you ain't coming back. You know what I'm saying? But, as they say, no pain, no gain, right? So, <laughs> so hey, let's just hop it over here. Uh, just gonna follow the trajectory. All right, good. Like I said, if you fall down there, bro, it's game over, you know? So definitely not the easiest thing to do here. Okay, hop over there. This one looks sketchy. Uh, let's see if it's slippery. Oh no, it's good, it's good, it's good. All right, this is good, this is good. I think we gotta try it over here. I got the gulp on. Like I told you guys in the previous video, right? You never know what you're gonna catch on the gulp. So we're gonna roll with this for today and hopefully land something exotic for our catch and cook. Oh, it's on. It's on, it's on, it's on, it's on. Oh, it's a nice flounder, I think. Got nice weight to it. Oh, the jacks. The jacks. It's going to the jacks. 
flounders going to the jets. It's coming up, it's coming up. What is it? A sea Robbie? What the hell is that? Perfect for a catch and cook. Perfect for a catch and cook. I always wanted to try one. It's not, not bad, not bad. You know, I always wanted to try one. Hey man. Perfect for, for a catch and cook here. Striped sea robin showed up. So excited. Thought it was something different. <laughs> oh, bro. Another sea robin. It's gotta be another sea robin. Oh, he got off. Bro, that was another sea robin 100%. Who would have thought we would find the school of sea robins over here? They say that this fish tastes quite good, so you know what, man? I'm willing to do a little catch and cook, see how they taste. People always call the poor sea robin a trash fish. You know, trash fish, trash fish. I don't know about that. I don't know about that. They fight pretty damn good, in my personal opinion. Spots like this, you got like 20 people, like there really isn't that many rocks that are even dry. Yeah, like, man. He fell in a hole so deep. Who? Uh, my friend. I was where you guys were. He, he, he fell in the hole, bro? He fell like deeper than what's under you. Help, help. I'm looking around. I run back because I figure like, yo, he's in the water. Uh-huh. We had to tie a rope with a, like a, like a dropper loop. You had to tie, had to what, tie where did you get the rope from? People had to pull him out of the hole. How, how, he couldn't get out. But I mean, how, where did you get the rope from? Found that there was a rope in the rocks. Oh. Found that, pulled him up. His hole inside of his arm was caught up. Oh, really? Like, yesterday. Yesterday. That's crazy, bro. The current was coming in. Uh huh. He got pushed underneath the rock. Oh, so my goodness, dude. Yeah, it was. It was pretty funny now, but... Yeah, no kidding, bro. I, I gotta put this on YouTube, bro. I don't know. I feel the sea robbing is not really enough, you know, for the catch and cook. So, hmm, I wonder if there's any banded rudderfish around the area, you know, as another exotic species. A lot of people usually say, man, let's go fishing with the uh, EPF, right? Let me, let me just show you guys here the pass that I take. By the way, if you fall in this hole, you ain't coming back, never coming back up here. You know what I'm saying? So, gotta be careful. You know, GoPro doesn't really give you a sense of depth, which is bad. But if you fall in one of these holes, guaranteed, you never come back up. So, you know what? I gotta be careful here. This is the path that I need to do just to get to the damn spot. So... You guys understand now, a lot of people, right, usually say, yeah, let's go fishing right here. Absolutely. I encourage everyone to come out here just to stay safe, you know. Man, I see all this bait in front of me. They're just swimming around peacefully. Just no banded rudderfish. This is all about timing, too. You gotta wait until the banded rudderfish pass around for me to cast my stuff right in the middle of the pod. All about timing. We got one banded rudder fish. Banded rudder fish on the spoon. Ah, another exotic species for our catch and cook today. On the side of the mouth, a banded rudder fish. Took a while, but I really wanted to taste one, you know? So finally, we got the banded rudder fish. All right, let me tell you, it took a little while for me to catch this banded rudder fish today. I guess we gotta have a real, real good catch and cook, huh? It's gonna be striped sea robin plus banded rudder fish. All the exotics, man. We're gonna taste some new fish today.
Not bad, folks. Not bad at all. So we got two different species in the cooler right now. Two species that I have never tasted before, right? One is the striped sea robin, the Prionotus evolans. And then the other one is the elusive, super elusive, as you guys saw in this video, all right? The banded rudderfish. What is that? That is the Seriola zonata, I believe that is the scientific name of the fish. So, you know, we are hopping to the kitchen now. I'm gonna clean those fish and just fry it up with a little bit of salt and pepper. But before that, I would like to give a few remarks about this video, all right? In the series of videos that I've been doing down here in the Jersey Shore, if you guys ever come fishing at this particular spot, right? I mean, you guys watch this video, you guys know where it is if you have been here before. Number one, just be careful. Be very, very careful because this place right here, this jetty in particular, is definitely one of the sketchiest jetties that I have ever been to. I mean, at the tip of the jetty, if you fall down like that kid told the story in the video, there's no coming back. <laughs> you know, and you, you gotta yell help, man. There's no coming back so if you are a little bit clumsy you know if you step in a place that is a little bit slippery and you fall and there's no one around wow I, let me tell you you are is screwed okay so if you come here first and foremost make sure that you are absolutely safe safety first right and number two today on the jetty and yesterday right there were almost fights happening around here over fishing spots i mean come on man we're all adults we all want to have a good time that's why i always emphasize right if you guys come fishing places like this that there's a lot of people fishing already just be polite be polite be respectful have your manners and etiquette in check don't cross lines right and nothing will happen to you if by accident you cross someone else's line hey just say sorry you know sorry i didn't mean to right be polite and, and everything's good right but the community definitely needs to be a little bit more respectful nowadays to avoid this type of circumstances that's why that's all i wanted to mention in this video let's hop to the kitchen now do the catch and cook get to taste some yummy fish i'm very hungry as well let's do it all right back to the hotel we're gonna do the cooking portion of our kitchen cook now but before that I would like to give a very big non-sponsored shout out okay to this place where I'm staying at it's called the Shore Point Motel let me tell you guys something man I paid pretty cheap for this hotel and I at the beginning I thought they gave me the wrong room right I even spoke to the receptionist and she was like, no, nah, that's, that's the right room. That's the one you booked. Let, let, let me show you guys. Let me show you guys. They gave me a room here with a full kitchen. As you guys can see, microwave, refrigerator, stove top, which is why I'm able to do this catch and cook, right? Not to mention that the max, <laughs> you can fit six people in this room, man. Look, I don't know, I don't know why they gave me this room. There's the big bed here. And there's two additional beds here. Potentially, this place could pretty much fit me, my wife, and like four kids, all right? So, big shout out to them, because without them, we wouldn't be able to do this catch and cook, all right? Now, I got the two exotic fish right in front of me. Let me show it to, to the camera here so you guys can take a look, right? We got the striped sea robin right over here, all right? And then we got the exotic banded rudderfish. All I'm gonna do with them is I'm going to fillet them. I got my casking knife right here. I don't really have the fillet knife though. I, I, I wasn't planning on this catch and cook, but I do have the casking bait knife. So I'm just gonna use the bait knife. I'm gonna fillet them. I'm gonna season them with salt and pepper, and we're just gonna fry it very lightly, right? As my father used to tell me, if you really want to taste, taste the flavors of the fish, right? The best way is just to put a little bit of salt, a little bit of pepper, and just fry them up very lightly so that you can really get the full experience, right, of how the meat tastes. So let's do that right now. Well, one thing that I can tell you that I totally regret 100% 
is not really bringing my cast king fillet knife because the fillet knife works so well for fillet right i had to use the cut bait the, the bait knife to fillet i mean look at this it wasn't that bad right this is for example the skin that i just fillet of a, a striped sea robin right you can even see the stripes on the side from the pattern it wasn't that bad but if i had a fillet knife it would have been much much better so there we go final results i guess you guys can differentiate which one is which right this one here is the sea robin it has a very springy texture to the meat okay just like kind of lobster wise right and let me tell you something the stripe sea robin people say it has very little meat right but one fillet like this this is still quite a lot of meat in my personal opinion from one sea robin like that and the one down here right that has the little red bloodline in the middle is the banded rudderfish right and i was very surprised actually okay not so surprised to find out that the banded rudderfish has a has an extra set of bones right around the bloodline right which kind of makes sense because it is a type of of jack so what i'm gonna do now is i just gonna put a little bit of salt and pepper on this i don't really have oil i don't have flour i mean a hotel is gonna be salt pepper fry and we're gonna taste it all right we're about to start cooking now fires on high we got the fan going this seems to be a non-stick pan i don't really have oil right so that's why it's fundamental to have a non-stick pan here we're just gonna put the fillets banded banded rudderfish banded rudderfish banded rudderfish it's striped sea robin it's striped sea robin we're just gonna cook them like this you know and uh see how they taste see look at the, the meat is already shrinking you guys can actually see the meat shrinking, right? From the laws of water. Hopefully this is a non-stick pan. We will see. Oh yeah, holy moly, it's cooking very fast too. Wow, the banded rudderfish has got a white flaky texture to it. And then the striped sea robin also turns white, of course. But check this out, it's more like a lobster it's like a lobster like feel you see that very interesting only salt and pepper we're gonna cook them only for a little bit more don't want to be overcooked and then we're gonna do a taste test all right this is the moment of the truth two species that i have never tasted before if you guys look very carefully you can still see right the hot Smells amazing, right? Coming out of the fish. We got on one side the striped sea robin, and on the other side here, the banded rudder fish. There's still some liquid out here, as you guys can see. I did not overcook it, right? But it is not like raw, raw. Two species of fish that I have never tasted before. So, hey, it's time to dig in. Let's get started with the banded rudder fish, exotic species of fish, only type of jack as far as I know, Amberjack in New Jersey that people catch from shore at times. Let me have my crush orange on the side just in case, you know, things go wrong here. I don't know about this flavor. So, all right, let's try it out. Just salt and pepper, banded rudder fish. Mmm. This is really good. <laughs> I'm actually fascinated. <laughs> I'm surprised. This is really, really good. Holy cow. It has zero fishiness to it to begin with. I've, I've never had this before. I would like to emphasize, right? I mean, I never caught one before. Wow. Only until, you know, two videos ago. Bro. Mmm, this is really good. I may have to put some extra efforts in the upcoming years to catch a few more of these. You know, I've tasted Jack before. But this right here, my friends, 
it, it's godly. Mmm, just a little bit of salt and pepper, no oil, man, no oil. Mmm, mmm. I did tell you guys that the center has some small bones. Most of them are edible, right? But if you fillet right, you know, you can take them out. Very good. Now let's try the sea robin. We're doing the full taste test. You see, man, when I do catch and cooks, I don't just eat a small piece. Good, you know, and then I be asked my way out of it. No, man, I like the fish. I will eat it. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to finish it up, boys. So I know this is a long video, but bear with me, you know, this one right here. It's striped sea robin, all right? Let's try it out. My first ever time trying sea robin, okay? Mmm. The meat texture is definitely different than the banded rudder, rudder fish. The jack was like tender, mild, sweet, you know? The sea robin, also zero fishiness very good it has just got more of a, a springy taste to it right but because i didn't overcook the meat it's actually damn perfect so you know what people call the sea robin a trash fish right mm. often because they have the fish on the other side of the line i guess and they think it's a big ass flounder and sometimes it turns out to be a sea robin this is no trash fish to me, man. I mean, I hate the terminology to begin with, right? That's why I call this video exotic species. The species I have never tasted before. Look at this meat. Look at this meat. And tell me, tell me you wouldn't eat something like this. This is amazing, guys. You know? That's why I say, sea robin is such an underrated type of fish. This, this is crazy. This is so good. My goodness, I would take C. Robin home to eat any day. Mmm. Anyways, time to finish this catch and cook, man. I'm gonna finish this plate here. I'm gonna show you guys, man. You know, this is, how, this is my breakfast. I ain't kidding you. I ain't doing this catch and cook just for entertainment, man. Th this is my breakfast. I'm going out fishing after this. You know what I'm saying, man? Look. Last piece of C. Robin. Go in, you go out, man, you catch your own fish, you harvest selectively, right? You bring it home to eat, bro. It's a great feeling, you know what I'm saying? Don't harvest a lot and all the time, right? Harvest selectively, you'll be helping yourself, the community, everyone. Wonderful table fare right here. Mmm. Bro. Well. This is it for this catch and cook. There's nothing more I can show you guys, you know what I'm saying? Because look. <laughs> There's nothing much I can show you guys. Mmm. One banded rudder fish. And one striped bass. I mean, the striped sea robin. Two amazing, beautiful fish to eat. I would take them again in a heartbeat, you know? But this is it for this video. I hope you guys enjoy it. You know, you got to see. I know it's a little bit long, okay? Catch and cooks for me are long. But you guys got to see the process of hunting for the fish, catching the fish, coming to the kitchen, right? Just doing a very quick cleaning, salt, pepper, and eating the fish. It is the product from going out there in the wild, getting your own food, bringing back home, turning something that is very slimy and dirty in a certain sense into something clean right and consuming it now those two fish are part of me you know think about it this is something very deep man it is ingrained in human nature you know nothing against vegetarians you know and, and vegans right but when you do things right you know when you harvest selectively bring the fish home feed your family right make sure that the fish don't have a lot of heavy metals and pcbs it's good for human consumption it is a wonderful feeling all right, this is it for this video, guys. Thank you very much for watching. I'm really going out fishing right now, you know? So, tight lines, I'll see you all next time.